Ha men hår ge vårt voj och vårt guinser på. Amen. At the dawn of the internet age, it was commonly believed that ubiquitous access to information would foster respect and mutual understanding between those with opposing views. I think there was a lot of optimism as to the ways that this new tool might be used. And although I'm young, I am old enough to remember a time before the internet was so easily accessible. Of course, 30 years into the internet experiment, we don't find that people have come closer together, have come to understand each other more fully, have we? I think we have more so found people more polarized than ever. A technological innovation which was hoped to be used to share the libraries of the world that had been previously inaccessible to the masses has now, in fact, and unfortunately created fora for like-minded people to screen their own opinions in a sort of echo chamber. These virtual communities of like-minded people only seem to reinforce their previously held views rather than exploring and challenging themselves with new ideas. We find this in all sorts of spectra, right? Republicans versus Democrats, conservative versus liberal, religious people versus secular people. It seems that no matter what your worldview is, there will be a forum that you can find on the internet to reinforce your own view rather than trying to understand the other more fully. One of these polarizing topics that we might find on the internet is, comes from the form, in the form of fiscal responsibility. How do we take care of our finances? Do I choose to sacrifice now to set myself up for security later? Or do I choose to enjoy life now, knowing that tomorrow is not guaranteed? These opposing worldviews find themselves represented in two different approaches that we can find quite a lot about on the internet. The first is called the FIRE movement, and the second is called the YOLO philosophy of life. So what are these two opposing views that we find on the internet? The first, which is called FIRE, stands for Financially Independent Retire Early. This is a quite organized community that you can find on the internet of a group of people who live radically and frugally at a very young age in order to try to reach finance, financial independence decades earlier than usual. So this group of people commits themselves to doing radical things and most of them tend to save between 50 and 80 percent of their incomes um, in their early years, their 20s and their 30s, with the hopes of being able to retire by their 40s or their 50s. And many of them do succeed at reaching financial independence by their early 40s. That's on one extreme, one end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum, and probably more known to us, is the young people who adhere to the life philosophy YOLO. You only live once. And so, the philosophy of YOLO, as we might call it, it's not necessarily a formal community like FIRE is, but it's more of a motto for life. That you should enjoy life today because tomorrow isn't guaranteed. Understanding that you're only young once and you can't go back um, in order to enjoy those youthful years, you try to do whatever you can today. Just seize the moment, right? Carpe diem might be a more ancient way of saying the same philosophy. The YOLO philosophy is focused around treating yourself, going on fancy vacations, buying expensive cars, never saying no, and leveraging debt in order to be able to afford this lifestyle. I think that most of us in the sanctuary would agree that both of these philosophies is extreme, and that we probably should not aim for either of them. Rather, that it's more healthy to find some balance in between. 
to try to claim responsibility for the future while also finding ways of enjoying today. And so the problem with the internet age is that we tend to look at life through these polar opposites, through the blacks and the whites, through these very extreme views that we are encountering. Whether it's being a MAGA Republican versus being a progressive Democrat, or whether it's being a consecrated monk versus being an ardent atheist, or, as we just discussed, being part of the FIRE movement or living according to YOLO, we tend to hear the extreme view so often that we feel that the only alternative is to find somewhere in the middle. That we're going to moderate between the two extreme views. And yet, I think that this way of looking at life is deceiving. Life is not simply on a linear spectrum. It's not simply finding balance between two extremes. What we find through the Gospels is that typically this linear perspective is missing an entire dimension. That when we factor God into our decision making, we tend to see things from quite a different lens. And that's what's at the heart of today's Gospel reading. It might seem at first that the argument that Christ is making through his parable is the argument between living the fire lifestyle of planning ahead and having an early retirement versus the YOLO perspective of just living for today and throwing all caution to the wind. And yet, if we view today's reading from this perspective, we're really missing the point. So what is the parable that Christ offers us today? The parable is of a rich fool who's worked very hard throughout his life. He's accumulated vast wealth. And so, after a very successful crop one year, he says, I have all that I need. Actually, I have so much that my storehouses for all of the grain that I have made are already full. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tear down those storehouses, build even larger storehouses to be able to put all the excess into. I'm going to just sit back and relax. I've done my work. Time to retire. And the response that we hear in the parable is one of condemnation from God who says, you fool. You don't realize that Today is the last day of your life. All of this that you've worked for up until this point has been for nothing. You've worked and worked and worked to be able to enjoy your life and have this retirement, and yet today is the last day of your life. What have you really accomplished? You were so focused on your financial security that you missed all the rest that life has to offer. At this point, we might think that what Christ is about to say is, just enjoy today just live in the moment. And in a sense, he does. What does he say? Christ says, therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat, nor about your body, while what you shall put on. He's saying don't worry about planning for things of the future, about building a nest egg. And so we might think he's referring to you only live once. Just live for today. Whatever money you have, use that, right? And yet that's not what Christ says, is it? He goes on by saying, For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Whereas we tend to think of the issue of finances, of am I going to be responsible by planning for the future, or am I going to simply live in the moment and enjoy what I have, Christ is saying, why are you so anxious about something so trivial in the first place? Why is your entire attention simply focused on accumulating possessions for yourself? And he goes on to warn his disciples by saying, take heed and beware of all covetousness, for a man's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. What Christ is saying here is that either direction is dangerous. Anywhere along the spectrum of focusing solely on finances is going to get you into trouble. What is the divine alternative? The divine alternative is focus on God first. The end of today's reading says, Seek the kingdom of heaven first, and all of these things will be yours as well. 
What's Christ saying here? Is he saying that we shouldn't at all think about our finances? We shouldn't plan ahead? No. What he's saying is that the perspective of your finances always needs to be taken from the lens of whose money you are caring for. The bold statement that Christ is making is that, yes, you have possessions in your life, but they are but gifts from God. They are not yours. All that you have in your life is a gift from me. How do you care for something differently if it is not yours, but someone else's? I think that we all naturally would know what to do if someone gave us a gift. If someone handed over their car and said, take care of this, drive it, maintain it, we would probably take care of it better than our own, wouldn't we? So at the end of the day, we are but stewards of God's money. We are but stewards of God's time. We are but stewards of the gift of the people in our lives. How will we care for those people and those things and those possessions that are in our life as gifts from God? That's what's at the heart of today's reading. Many of us might find ourselves in places of financial abundance. Many of us might find ourselves in places of financial security. And yet, the response is the same. Whatever we have, however much, is all a gift from God. And so before making any financial decision, we must ask the question, what is God calling me to do with his money today? At seasons in our life, it may mean he's calling me to be responsible, to be a good steward, to save up for the future. Today is a sunny day, but tomorrow is going to be a rainy day. And so perhaps what God is calling me to do is to invest and to save and to be responsible. There might be other seasons in our life where God is saying, you know what, this is a season to celebrate. Use this money for something that brings joy to others in your life. Maybe there are other seasons where Christ is saying it's raining outside and you're going to go through a period of struggle. Be frugal with what you have. Whatever the decision may be, all of our decisions in life must go through the lens of what God is calling us to do. And if we always come to God before making these decisions, that is the only way in which we can live a life that is free from anxiety. If we put things in His hands, then the burden of the decision is not on us. He's in control. He knows what's best for us. Why are we trying to steer the ship? We see a perfect illustration of this in St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, where he talks about being content in all circumstances. He says the following, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Because I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Is that the way that we approach our finances? Is that the way that we approach our relationships? Is that the way that we approach living everyday life? Do I wake up every day and say, I can do all things through him who gives me strength? I don't know about you, but the second that I see any turbulent waters in my life, I tend to panic. I don't know about you. What a better way of living. And so, the call of our Lord Jesus Christ today is to neither live as a member of the fire movement or to live as a, a, a follower of the YOLO philosophy of life. Instead, may we avoid both the extremes as well as the middle ground, and instead, let us come to God for all things. Let us seek his kingdom first. Let us seek his guidance and his wisdom to deal with whatever circumstance we're in. If we can do this, not only will we find success, but more important than success from a worldly point of view, we will truly have the peace which only comes from Christ. Knowing that our lives are in his hands allows us to see the fact that we can get through anything, even the most difficult moments of our life. Living in this way, may we truly be content in all things and simply thank our Lord Jesus Christ for whatever blessing he has blessed us with today. 
And may we pray for the wisdom and the discernment to be good stewards of God's gifts to us in our lives, for which we should always offer praise and glory with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen.